Okay folks and welcome. Before we get started I want to tell you about a brand new course that we've got on outreachart.org. It's called How to Build a Successful Art Business and for an entire week you're going to get the opportunity to hang out with me and learn step by step how to build your very own art business. We cover things like Facebook marketing, we cover things like how to create an Etsy store, does Etsy sell, how to create a product line, we also look at how to create uh, art that's actually you're going to sell and engage people, your sales training, because that's one of the areas that artists struggle with the most. And we look at that and so much more. So if that sounds like something that you would really love to be part of, head to outreachart.org now. It's available right now. You get a notebook that comes with it as well, so you can work through um, and step by step, day by day, and hopefully be well on the way to creating your very own art book. Now, I've put this together. Um, it's at a great price by the way um, and this is something yes it's a little bit pricey to start out with but the cost that you are going to save over the years will be astronomical okay so I just want to throw that out there now and now on to today's show we are going to be answering the question is it important how I present myself and my artwork well first of all yes it is that should go without saying I heard a great quote the other day if you treat something like gold, people will believe it is gold. Uh, you may have seen the film Kung Fu Panda where Poe's dad says to him, you know, for something to be special, you don't have to add anything to it. It just needs to be treated and presented like it's special. People will have to believe it's special. Okay. One of the biggest problems that I see nowadays is artists that present themselves in just a horrible, horrible way. I'm sorry, artist, but you do. Okay, and I've got three top tips for you today to hopefully try and get you on the right set. I'm trying to give you more of a business mindset, and that's tip number one. You've got to stop thinking about this as, oh, well, I'm just kind of hanging out, I'm having some fun, I'm, I'm messing about, I'm doing whatever. And you've got to start thinking, hey, I'm actually in a business, okay? You need to start thinking about your paintings as products, and you are a salesperson. You need three things to get a business to work. First of all, you need a product. Second of all, you need someone to sell it. Third of all, and this one you can sort of either work or not work, but you need money to be able to get it off the ground. Um, that comes later on. But the, one of the biggest problems that I see now, as I say, is people not thinking about their artwork like a business. And this, you know, sort of ties into all of that because the way they present the, their artwork isn't something like gold dust, isn't something like, oh wow, look at this, this is amazing. It actually looks like something that's been scraped off their shoe. Now. Now why do I say that? Because they take photographs. Your photographs are your... Your paintings are your tools to selling, okay? That's all paintings are. If you are in the art business, your paintings are your tools to sell. Why? Because somebody looks at that artwork and they think, wow, or hmm, interesting, I want to know more about that. But, but if you're taking really bad quality photos with bad lighting, and it's blurry and it's not clear and it just doesn't look and feel good then you've actually eliminated yourself from the marketplace before you even start. Why? How long do you think someone in today's society takes to look at a piece of artwork or to engage with a website? Five minutes, ten minutes, an hour maybe? No. Two seconds. Two seconds and it's literally a case of if they don't like it they're just going to move on to the next thing, okay? So you have to think about how to stand out, how to present yourself in a different way, how to present your artwork in a different way. It is absolutely vital that you think about that. So that's step number one. Get some really good quality photos of your artwork. Now you might say, well, John, you know, I don't have, you know, money for a really big fancy camera like you do, or I don't have money to present myself in this specific way. Well, that's fine but you need to be aware here. This is one of the main things. Phones nowadays have great quality cameras. Why? Why? Because the people that made them looked and said, you know what, what is the one thing that people use their phones for more than anything now? 
It's taking photographs, okay? It's selfies, it's taking photographs of places, food, artwork, okay? All those kind of things that people are doing. So you need to be really investing whatever you can in a good quality phone or camera. I, I, I encourage a phone for the simple reason that you can take a photograph on it and you can share it. Whereas with a camera, you've got to take a photograph on it or a video on it, then edit it and then put it up online. So it's a little bit more expensive, okay? But certainly a phone is a must for getting some really great quality photos. So tip number two that I wanna look at um, with artists, and this is again, so, so we've looked at, you know, the, the, the things that artists do in terms of bad photos. Now we want to look at how they present themselves, okay? What do you think the one biggest thing that artists do that stops them selling is? Is it the photos? Is it the painting? No, it's actually this. They go in for an immediate sell. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. You may have seen it on Facebook on, you know, a lot of the art pages that you are privy to. And what do you see most of? Do you see engaging posts where people look at it and think, oh wow, that person, I want to know more about them. No, more often than not, I see a sales post. And sometimes I see really bad quality sales posts. So for example, one that I was looking at today, a gentleman from France, um, he had posted okay photos of his artwork. The artwork itself didn't engage me personally, but what really switched me off was this. He said, well, this is the painting, this is the size, this is how much it costs. Okay, now you've got a 95% chance of failure with that. Why? Because unless somebody looks at it and thinks, wow, the price is great, it looks really good. We walk you through this more in the, in the course. Um, but the price is really good, the, the, the artwork is really good, it's all, you know, it's all great, it ticks every box for me. Then people are just going to click onto the next thing. What you need to do is to walk your customer or your client through on a journey. So, so when you are posting things, what I want you to do is this. Do not even get into the price conversation, okay? What you need to do is, this is a painting of such and such. Let's throw up a painting here, for example, a brand new seascape that I've just completed. Okay, now this is the ad that I posted. Do you see any price there at all? No, because what it has is literally a beautiful high quality picture, uh, or a photograph of the picture. It has a story that's there. Now what does the story do? People love stories. Right from the beginning of time, people have loved stories. They like being taken on a journey. They like to envision and emotionally engage with what you are saying. Okay, so you've two things there. You've a beautiful painting, and now you've got engagement with what you're doing. So to do this, you need to think a little bit, okay? Now, I know for some people, they're like, no, I don't want to think. Well, fine. Okay, you're putting yourself out of the art business before you've even tried. But the way that you present it to someone is, this is engaging, this is emotive, this is fun. I want to know more. And then when they ask you, Mr. Morris, um, how much is this painting? I said, well, can I just tell you a few little details about this painting first? This is the size, it's painted with this, it's varnished, it comes ready to hang, it's made with these materials, and we offer payment plans for this specific piece. Now you might think, well, you know, I, I just want to know a price. Some people do. Other people want to be taken on a journey. And then what they're going to say is, well, how much is it? You, you get that excitement going. How much is it, John? It's this amount. Oh, well, I'm not sure if I can afford that. Okay, well, that's okay. We offer payment plans so you can split the cost of the painting over a long period of time if desired. Do you see how you present yourself in a very, very different way? So first of all, tip number one, get some really good quality photographs in your artwork or of your artwork. It is vital for your success. Second of all, stop with the price and sales posts okay, all the time. Sometimes it's going to engage people more often than not, it's going to switch them off, okay, especially in today's market because Facebook is trying to get rid of a lot of that stuff. The third thing that I want to talk to you about is how you present yourself as a person to others. 
Now, I'm not saying that you need to uh, completely get rid of who you are or anything like that, but you need to think about the kind of audience that you want to attract. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, I attract, the in, in the world of business, I suppose, I teach and I coach people how to build a successful art business. Now, if I just came on here in a t-shirt, as a slob, I was unwashed, I was unkept, couldn't speak properly, couldn't, you know, formulate words and things and make it simple and understandable, more often than not, you are going to switch off. But why do close to 500 to 5,000 people every single week tune in, whether it be on Facebook, on YouTube, to our show to actually see what's going on because they know that number one, I have great credibility. Number two, they have seen the advice and information that I'm giving. And number three, they look and think, well, this guy actually is who he says he is. He's got a nice suit on. He's, you know, he's nice. I mean, I've got a beard, don't get me wrong, but I like that. But you still got that artist in you, okay? But what you need to be thinking about is this. Who am I trying to attract? Who is my target audience when I'm trying to sell? Okay, now I hate that word sell, but that's in essence what we are doing. If you're in business, you are trying to sell your artwork. Now, what I want you to think about is three things. You've, you've what we call three tiers. You've got your low hanging fruit. So that's people that come in just as customers. And on the new course, obviously we talk about relationship building. Uh, we are gonna go into that in a little bit detail um, in another episode. But we talk about you know building relationships and the difference between customers and clients. A customer is someone that's gonna come in and that's gonna spend maybe 60 pounds, $75, something like that with you, okay? They're not gonna usually spend a large amount of money and they're not gonna buy too often. A client is someone that you nurture a relationship with. But as I say, we'll get into that. Um, so, so you need to think about that. So you've got your customers and your low-hanging fruit. You've got your middle class and the people that are going to spend a little bit more money, okay? Then you've got your upper class, your upper echelons, and the professionals. So your doctors, your lawyers, your, your solicitors, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Your judges. Um, and you need to think about the people that you are working with. For example, you can get away with a t-shirt and jeans and painting in your kitchen if you're looking for the lower hanging fruit, okay? Chances are you're gonna to sell to them more regularly anyway. Your middle class people are gonna be your next level up. They're gonna be your next price range, okay? And they're gonna be looking for something a little bit more special. So it might be, you know, walking them through a little bit more on how you paint, what you do, building that relationship with you. Now, the top, the creme de la creme, shall we say, okay, so the people that are making the most money, your professionals, they are right at the top. They are the hardest nuts to crack. But if you do, you are going to make some serious money with them. Prime example, we have just finished a, a series of nine paintings um, for a gentleman in Michigan and it came out at something like nearly eight thousand dollars okay and that was for uh, a few paintings here in their essay and that was over the scale of about three months something like that okay so nine grand or eight or nine grand for three months work isn't bad at all okay and these were wrestling paintings he was a hardcore wrestling fan again this is another subject for another time but thinking about your audience and who you're presenting to okay it is really really important folks on how you present yourself and how you talk how you engage with people and for goodness sake please get the photos sorted out and stop with the sales posts you will see a big engagement increase with what you do if you just change these few little things. Well, we're out of time, folks. I really hope that has helped you today and to get you thinking more in the business mindset of how to build a successful art business. As I say, if you are interested in coaching or if you're interested in the brand new course, message me or get in touch with us at outreachout.org. We would love to chat with you um, and things are affordable. That's, that's one of the main things I wanna throw out there for artists because I know, you know, very few artists nowadays are making great money at this, but there are some that if you tweak a few things here and there, you'll be amazed at what actually happens and what comes on. Anyway, I've been your host, folks, uh, John Morris, the painter of memories. This has been Art Tips with John, the show that teaches you how to unleash your creative talent, but also how to build a successful art business. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care.